Today we are going to see together how to transform your videos with stable diffusion using LoRa models. In particular, I'm going to use the Ghibli Studio LoRa model from Civit AI and we are going to make this transformation without training a model. So obviously training a model is better because it gets you better results, better outputs, but it's very slow, right? So what we want to do today, we want to transform your videos quickly and easily. And we can do that by using the image to image tab within Stable Diffusion. Before starting, let's have a look at the requirements you need to follow for starting this tutorial. You need to have Stable Diffusion <laughs> as first thing. This can be local on your computer, it can be through Collab or Rumpod or Paper Space, whatever you want. Then you need to have a video to edit and for modifying it, we need to split the video into image frames. For doing that, you will need a video to frame software. And this can be a free one, like for example, DaVinci Resolve, or I found online this ezgif.com, which is quite useful. Or if you have Photoshop, you can use Photoshop as well, but this will be on the payment. You also need a frames to video software because at the end of the, you know, the process we'll have to aggregate all of the images generated together. And again, in this case, we can use DaVinci Resolve, which is free and quite useful. Then within Stable Diffusion, I'm going to use ControlNet. If you don't have ControlNet, you will need to download it, right? You can do that in the extension tab of Stable Diffusion. This is the URL. So what you can do, you can just get the URL from GitHub, you go into install from URL, you copy and paste the URL in here and then you click into install and it will be automatic. Now when you download ControlNet you don't actually have the models, so you just have the preprocessor. So what you have to do, you need to go into Hugging Face, which is where usually this uh, kind of models are, so here, and you will need to download the PTH file. And you can see here, like for example, for Kani, you will have to download this Kani PTH file. You can just click on this little button next to it. Actually, I can zoom in a little bit. So this button here, and for open pose as well, you can download here. For soft edge, you have this one. And I'm going to use that as well. Uh, actually, I'm going to use this one. So you can download it from here. Why are we using ControlNet? We're using ControlNet for avoiding flickering. Flickering is when you have all of the image going like a little bit crazy, yeah? And we cannot remove it, but we can reduce it. So with ControlNet, we can control the position of your body, of your hands, of your face, and create an output which is more coherent with the input. Another control net model I'm going to use is Mediapipe. You are not gonna find Mediapipe in this link, but you will find it in this other link. In this case, you will have to download both the YAML file and the safe tensors. Mediapipe is quite useful because with that you can control instead the face expression. So if you're smiling, it will output a smile, exactly the same smile as the input image. Once you downloaded these files, uh, you will need to move them from the download folder to the Stable Diffusion Web UI. So I'm going to show you where. So we are in the Stable Diffusion Web UI, you go into Extensions, and then as the Web UI Control Net, and then here we have models and here's where you need to move all of your downloaded files. So you have both the PTH and the YAML file. Cool, so once you have done this, then another thing about control net is that I'm going to use four type of control nets. I'm going to use Mediapipe, Depth, I'm going to use Kenny and soft edge. When you initialize Stable Diffusion for the first time, you can use just one control net. And if you want to use more, you need to activate them. How to do that? You go into settings, you scroll down until you see control net here, and then you have this multi control net max models amount, and you change this to be four or more, depending on how many you want to use. So once you 
chose your number, you can apply settings, reload UI, and then if you go into image to image or also a text to image and you go down to the control next section, which is in here, you will see you have four tabs because I chose four, right? So four control net unit. And for each control net tab, you can choose a different control net model. We'll see this later. Last thing is face restoration. So if we scroll down on this image to image tab, you can see here restore faces. Now you can adjust this, the setting for these restore faces again in settings. You go into face restoration and then here you can choose whether to use code former or GFP gun. Code former, you usually use it to adjust more realistic faces and GFP gun is usually used more for anime. So that's why in this case, I'm going to use GFP gun. You can also choose not to use face restoration in the first part of this image generation, but you can use it when you upscale the image. So if you didn't use the face restoration before, you can use it after. So here in extra, so you see, if you scroll down, you have GFP gun visibility or code former visibility, and you can choose a value between zero to one. You can use a combination of the two or you can use just one of the two, it's really up to you. We are going to use a LoRa model for applying our transformation to our video. Actually, I'm going to show you the final result I've got compared to my original video. So this one on the right is my original video. And then here I have two different transformations. One with GFP GAN applied before upscaling the image. And this one is with GFP GAN applied afterwards. Another difference is the denoising strength. Here I'm using less denoising strength, meaning that the final video will be more similar to my original video. So it's using less creativity. While in this case, in the middle one, the denoising strength is slightly higher. So this means that the final video will be a little bit more creative. And as you can see, it's probably more aligned to the Ghibli style rather than the more realistic original video. Okay, let me play this one second. It's just six seconds. Hello everyone. Today we are going to make this. Okay, so what you probably notice that in the middle case, which is this one, the problem of flickering is a little bit higher and this is because of the denoising strength. So higher is the creativity that we apply in our uh, settings in stable diffusion, the higher the flickering will be in the final output. So it's really up to you of what you want to do. Obviously there are some techniques for reducing uh, flickering and we'll see them towards the end of the video when we'll put everything together, but it's obviously still an issue, right? Now, all of this for telling you what is that this approach I'm using, it's uh, for when you want to create a video which uh, is uh, similar to the original one. So you see the modification I'm applying is actually just a style modification. So if I wanted to modify myself and I wanted to, I don't know, change it to be a robot or an animal, for example, I could have not done it using image to image because flickering would have been like crazy, right? So in that case, training a model would be the way to go. Okay, said that, we can start with our video. So once you chose your video, if you have DaVinci Resolve, you can upload it in here, file, import, media, and then I have my video here. Now you can drag and drop your video in here if you want. Then something really important I want to show you is the FPS. The FPS is the frames per second. And this is very important for when you split your video into frames. So if we go into this first tab here, you have your video here, you see clip name is Laura. And then you have the column here, FPS. And it's telling me that the FPS for this video is 30. It means that for each second, the video is made of 30 images. So when you are going to split your video, keep this in mind. So how many FPS is your video made of? Because this will be asked for generating the frames. And it's important to keep this in mind because first of all, the higher the number of frames you are using, the slower will be stable diffusion for generating the images. 
and that's fine right but also because when you then have all of your images and you're going to use them for creating your videos if you haven't chosen the same number of FPS as the video, you may end up having a shorter or longer video. Now, if you're using DaVinci, you can split the video going into this last tab here. And then obviously you can choose the file name and then the location using this browse. And then here you have format and you can change that into TIFF. Usually TIFF is for image. You can choose the resolution and the frame rate so in this case, in case of DaVinci, you just have one option, so that's fine, which is 30, which is perfect. Once you chose all of them, you can add to render queue. I'm going to use desktop just to, to do something to show you how it works. Then you add to render queue and then render all. Once this has finished, you will see all of the TIFF images inside your, the folder you chose. So the only downside is that Stable Diffusion uh, doesn't read TIFF images so if you decide to go for this route, then you need to modify, you need to transform your images from TIFF to PNG or JPEG. So just keep this in mind. Anyway, my video is six seconds. Given that I'm extracting 30 images for each second, it means that I'm going to have 30 multiplied by six, which is around 180. And here they are. Now you see that they are already in JPEG. This is because I did it with Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Something really important is how to name these files. They have to have this format, right? So they have to be name or even without name, just the number, but they have to be, you know, 001, 002, if you have until 999, because then Stable Diffusion will take them in a numerical order, right? So if you have, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, this is not gonna work because Stable Diffusion will take zero, one, ten, eleven. So what happens is that you will have all of your images shuffled and you don't know how to then put together your video. If you have more than 999 images, you should put then zero, 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 so four times zero. Now, the other option I was telling you is this website here. I uploaded my video already. The only issue is that I can, if you go into frame rate, you can choose just five, 10, and 20 FPS. And as I told you before, this should be in reality equal to 30. Now, when you convert, this is gonna give you all JPEG files. When you go at the end of this page, you can easily download a zip file in here, download frames as zip. Another way of cutting the, the video is to use ControlNet M2M. This is free in Stable Diffusion. It doesn't work for me for some weird reason. It doesn't even give me an error, like it just doesn't work. But if you get it to work, what you have to do, you need to go into settings first. You go into ControlNet and then you need to tick this box, which is allow other script to control this extension. You need to apply settings and reload UI. I can actually do it now, then reload. And then when you go down here in the script, you can choose control net M2M. And then here you can upload your video and choose the duration. The duration I assume is the FPS, but I'm not 100% sure. This is still not clear. I looked online everywhere and no one is actually able to, to say anything about this duration, but I assume it's, it's this, right? And, uh, and then once you upload that, you don't have to touch anything else really, and you just need to press generate and this should automatically work. The final way of doing it is via Photoshop. This is not for free, it's just if you have Adobe Photoshop on your computer. You go into file, sorry, this is in Italian. You import, and then here you will have uh, video levels, photograms video levels or something like that. And then you need to choose your video. And then here you can choose whether to upload the video from the beginning to the end, or you can just choose an interval, and then you move this slide around to choose the interval, actually this my video is just six seconds so I'm going to do from the beginning to the end you press ok 
is creating levels and then if you visualize the levels here you can see you have 183 levels here you go all of them then to export them you go into file export levels in files or export levels something like that and then you can yeah you can choose your folder again I'm going to for desktop you can choose the you know the first part of the file name and then the file type and then after that you click on submit here you have quality as well uh, this is not that important like obviously stable diffusion is intelligent enough so you don't need to have a really uh, full hd or very high resolution but it needs to be you know a good quality image obviously the higher the resolution the more time stable diffusion will uh, take for making an image okay cool so now that we have a folder with all of our images and they need to be named as we said before so 0001000002 and so on and so forth we finally initialize stable diffusion now i'm using this any lora checkpoint this is a lora model which is made for working with all LoRa models and usually works very well for anime LoRa models. So I'm using this. If you want to make something more realistic, I would suggest you probably to use Stable Diffusion 1.5. The LoRa model I'm using is Studio Ghibli, which is this one. It's a very good one, it always works and I really like it. I like Studio Ghibli, so it's, it's quite nice. Okay, so now we are ready to start. So the first thing to do is to go into this image to image tab and we need to choose a good picture among all of the pictures we downloaded before. It has to be a good picture where it's showing like the most important details, like for example, your hands, and they don't have to be in movements, they need to be clear. Or maybe where it's showing your teeth or the full body if you are doing a full body video and you upload it here. Now I can choose the number 165, I picked that before, here you go. Then just to you know give a start, instead of doing by yourself, what I will do given that we want to apply the Ghibli style, we can actually go into Civit AI and we can grab the generation data for this image for example. And we just copy and paste into our positive prompt, then we click this button here below the generate button and then all of the settings will apply into our stable diffusion. Now obviously we need to make some modifications like for example here so we can remove arms behind the back, base shoulders, smile, maybe we cannot talking or some, something like that. We can remove this LoRa model because we are not using it and I don't even have it. The negative prompt is usually fine and then yeah we can use crop and resize I want to, I don't want to have a vertical shape, but I want an horizontal one. So 960540. Then I'm going to keep this clip skip. Not sure if you know what this is. It's uh, quite interesting and not many people are talking about it, but clip is a model for generating text and image embeddings. It transforms the image into a vector of numbers. This model is made of layers of computations and the deeper you go into the layer, the more the vector generated will actually represent the concept within the image. So let's make a very basic example. If you have a picture of a dog and the dog is a French bulldog, the clip model in the first layer will give you dog. The deeper you go, so let's say in the third layer or second layer, you have the dog breed. So in this case, it will be bulldog. And then the deeper you go, so you will have a more specific dog type. And in this case, it will be French bulldog. So when we choose clip skip equal to two, we are telling clip to stop not at the last layer, but at the second to last layer. And this is helpful when you're training a model. And this is also helpful when you are generating images because you are using less computation power. Clip skip doesn't work for stable diffusion 2.0, but works only with stable diffusion 1.5 and all the other models which are trained using clip. So in this case, I'm going to leave it. This ENSD stands for 
etanois seeds delta. And usually this 31337 is used as a standard number and it's just additional noise added on top of this seeds number. The seeds is, is the noise, right? This is relevant when you actually have a seed here, like in this case. But if I have a random number, like minus one, this, is, this means it's random. So every time you generate an image, it's gonna give you a different seed. And so different uh, noise is added to the image and you will have different outputs. This doesn't really matter. So we can remove it. And then we have this uh, control net section where we have our four control net units and we are going to apply our control net models. What we have to do, we are going to upload exactly the same image we used for it, the previous section. In my case was number 165 this one. Then you are going to enable control net. If you don't do that, control net is not gonna work. And then I'm going to use in this first one, media pipe, both for the preprocessor and the model. These settings are usually fine, so I'm gonna keep them like that. And here something interesting is this control mode, where you can use balance, my prompt is more important and control net is more important. This is new in control net, like something that came out over the last one or two months. There is a nice example here. If you go down, here you go. So you can see that this is the original input and this is the output using the three different options. So when you say my prompt is more important, obviously here you can see that the output is more aligned to the style chosen. If you use control net is more important, it, it looks like, you know, it's giving more importance to control net obviously and to the original picture, so the final result is more realistic. And then balance is a middle way between these, these two, right? So depending on what you want, you can choose one or the others. So in my case, I'm going to use actually for media pipe, I'm going to use control that is more important, just to, you know, to try and then you can change it. And then you're going to do exactly the same for the others, but you are not gonna use the same preprocessor and model, obviously. So I'm going to upload the image, enable. In this case, I'm going to use that. And here, maybe I'm going to use my prompt is more important. Control net number two, again, upload the image, enable. I'm going to use soft edge. My prompt is more important. And then the last one, enable. I'm going to use Kanye. My prompt is more important. Okay, once we set up this general, you know, settings, actually I want also, I'm going to add these restore faces as well. I'm going to press generate and let's see what happens. And here you go, you have this image generated. And then you have, this is media pipe. So you can see it's giving you the face and like the expression on the face. Here is depth, it's tracking actually, you know, the depth of your image. So you have wider if it's closer and darker if it's far. This is soft touch. So it defines, you know, the edges of the elements or subjects. And this is Kenny, which is similar to soft touch, but a bit stricter. I'm not sure if I want to use Kenny actually, but well, I'll leave it for now. So here you can see we are also applying the face restoration. If we remove it, let's see what happens. So as you can see, the lines are less precise, but this will means that you ha will have more flickering. We can increase the denoising strength if we want to have something more creative. Let's run like this. And this is obviously more in line with the Ghibli style. And yeah, you need to, you know, play around with all of these settings to get what you actually want at the end. So once you have a, a good image, something that you actually like, we are ready for uh, processing the batch of images. Here you can see you have all the settings you use to generate the final image, which is this one in my case. And you have this seed, which is very important. So you need to copy this and paste in here. 
and this will allow you to use the same noise for all of the pictures uh, Stable Diffusion is going to process, uh, right? So this also means less flickering. If you don't use the same seed, the seed is gonna change for uh, each iteration and you will get different results all the time. Then after that we go into batch. We need to put the path to our input directory, which is the images we downloaded before. And in my case, I'm going inside my folder, right click, properties, and you copy this location. I'm in Windows now, but for Mac is exactly the same, right? So you, this is my Mac. You go into get info, and then you have here the directory you need to copy and paste in the same location in this. Then given we want to use exactly the same images also for control net, we don't need to put anything in here because it's gonna use exactly the same input directory. And then we need to go inside control net here, we need to remove all of the images and choose batch. Like this. Once this is done, you can press generate. This will take a little bit of time. It took me 30, around 30 minutes to run all of the images. And again, I had 180 pictures, 100, 183. So depending on how many pictures you have and also the resolution you are applying, it will take more or less time. Once this has finished, you can click on this icon here, on this button, and then you will have outputs, right? And you have this folder image to image images, unless you change the output directory, obviously. And if you open the folder, you have all of the outputs. Obviously, in this case, I use different settings. I'm going to share my settings with you on a Google Drive in case you want to use them. But just, you know, every image is different. So you probably need to use different settings. I'm gonna share them like this, so you will need to just, uh, you know, copy them like this. Copy, and then you go in here, you paste, uh, like we did before for the LoRa, and you click in here. Then probably there are some settings you need to change, but you can see them in here. I'm, I'm gonna share everything with you in case you, you need it. Okay, now that we have all of our images generated in the anime style, we can go into the extra tab and uh, we can upscale our images. We can do that using the GFB gun visibility. If you're using the anime, you want to restore the face and obviously you didn't use the restoring face before or the code former if you're doing something more realistic. So I'm gonna show you quickly for a single image, you need to, you go into your image to image file folder and then you can resize, I'm going to resize it by two because I don't need to resize that much. I'm going to use the RESR gun anime 6B. This is basically made for upscaling anime pictures. So it's, it's quite good in this case. I'm not going to use upscaler number two, but it's really up to you. You can do whatever uh, you prefer. So in this case, I used GFP gun already in this picture, but so for now, I'm just going to generate this just to show you. Here you go. This is the upscaled picture, which looks quite nice. So once you're happy with that, you can apply this upscale to all of the pictures, right? So you go into batch from directory, add here your input directory, which again, if you click here, you have outputs and it will be this image to image images. <laughs> and you have, I have, this is called with the date of today. So I'm going to just do it like this, copy my directory and paste it in here. Just make sure that inside this folder you have only the images you want to upscale because otherwise it's gonna take uh, a little bit more. You can choose a different output directory if you want and then you press generate. This is gonna be super quick. It will take probably two, three minutes depending on, your, on the power of your computer. Cool, so once this is done, you will have these output extras images, again, if you haven't chosen another directory, and you will have all of your 183 images in here. Yeah, now I just generated this last uh, three, which I can remove. So here you go, they are 183 because they start from zero. And we are actually now ready to put 
them all together to create our video. I'm going back to my DaVinci Resolve because I'm going to use that. I'm going to create new project, test, create. I'm going to upload the original video, which is this one in reality. You drag and drop in this timeline. So I think it's uh, the part I, I was using was something like this. So you can move this. This is, you know, the, where you are on the, in the timeline and then you can cut or using this, like this. You click, tac, like this. You see, it's cutting. Or you can use uh, on the Mac I'm using Command E. Then I can remove this, I, I can do Shift X. Hello everyone, today we are going to make this. Oh, I missed the last part, so it's, it's fine, yeah? So we have this one. Now, how to create the video with our images? So we are going to grab the, all the, you know, the images we have from our outputs. We will probably need to rename them like this, like, you know, there, there must be an index, otherwise DaVinci is not gonna recognize that it's a sequence of images. Then you select all of them and you can drag them and drop in the timeline like this. Easy. And you have them here. And that's it really. So now obviously I cut this not in the right way. So maybe something like, like this maybe. I can move this a little bit to the right. So I see, and this as well to the left. Let's see where it starts opening the mouth. So maybe it's like this. Hello everyone. Today we are going to make this. Yeah. So this is how it should be. So we can do that and cut here, yeah? Okay, so we can compare them now. Hello everyone, today we are going to make this. So once we've done this, obviously you can see there is some flickering on this video on the right, but it seems already like quite good, right? So if you are paying for DaVinci Pro, which is $300 per, $300 for lifetime, you can go into here and then if you go into effects and you have, if you type the, flick, the flicker and you can put it here, puff like this. I don't have it, so I'm gonna say not yet, but it tells you how it's gonna be with the watermark on top, which is quite useful. So we can compare them. Actually, too bad I compare them. Let me crop, oop crop this a little bit more and move it. Okay. So, and you can see this deflickering is working quite good, right? Okay. I'm gonna show you another way of doing it without paying. Obviously, it's not gonna be the same. I found this technique in this video here, video to anime. This guy in this video is training the model though. He's not doing image to image. He's using this uh, technique. I found it quite good for reducing flickering in the video. So let's remove this, the flicker. Okay, removed. And what we can do, we copy, command C, command V, we copy the same images and we put them on top. Okay, so this is gonna be exactly the same, but we need to click on this one, on the top one. We are going to change the opacity to something like 50, and we are going to change this composite mode to color, or darker color maybe. Okay, and then what we have to do as well, we need to right click on this time code here and we choose source frame. Then let's go back at the beginning, we zoom in and we move this by just one frame, like this. Drag and drop to the right, like this, you see? Okay. Then we go back, we zoom out a little bit, not too much, and then we see the result. Hello everyone, today we are going to make this. 
So the flickering is still there, obviously, it's very difficult to get rid of it, but the, like, it seems way better than before, right? So if we remove this, you see? Let's add this again. It seems way better. And that's it for today. I hope this was useful and you enjoyed. And um, let me know if you have any comments or suggestions. Always happy to listen. And yeah, see you in the next video. Bye.